Okay, um, I'm going to try something different here. Instead of writing out uh, an entry on how I think the Big Ten will finish, I'm going to go and do some video of it and see if you guys maybe think that's more interesting or like it better or you know something to keep me interested in doing it. So um, I'm a little limited by YouTube's time restraints and also uh, if you see me looking down it's because I've got notes on the teams and not trying to avoid the camera. So I'm going to split this into halves. I'm going to do half the Big Ten and then half not. I think half the Big Ten here and half the Big Ten the other. I think the Big Ten falls into four different tiers so this kind of will make it easier to do two tiers and then two other tiers and we'll see how that works out. So I'm going to start with Tier 1, which I think are three teams, uh, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Iowa. I think they're the three best teams in the conference, and I think they definitely comprise the cream of the crop, so to speak. So the team I think that's going to end up lined up in first place and either go to the Rose Bowl or the BCS Championship is Ohio State. Uh, they pretty much just have their entire team back from last year's 11-2 squad. Uh, offensively, they've got four offensive linemen back. They've got Terrell Pryor, a quarterback. Uh, Dan Heron and Brandon Sane return at runners. They've got Davier Posey and Dane Sansenbacher back at wide receiver. I think Deron Carter is going to be really good this year at wide receiver as well. So that gives them just threats everywhere. Defensive, defensive, our defenses can't um, you know over uh, defend a particular aspect of their offense. And I and I, I'm kind of buying into the Terrell Pryor Vince Young comparisons as juniors. And Vince Young led Texas to a national championship over USC back in 2005 when he was a junior before coming out and playing for the Titans. Uh, I think Pryor's, I think Pryor's going to be a lot like that. I think Ohio State's got a team that is just fantastic offensively. Uh, defensively, I think they're stacked. You've got Cameron Hayward back at defensive end, uh, Ross Holman, Brian Roll back at their linebackers. They've got uh, Chekwa and um, Devin Torrance back at cornerback. I just think the team is loaded. I don't think you can say it's uh, Jim Trussell's best team since the 2000 team won the national championship. But I think if it if Ohio State runs the table and wins it all, uh, I think you'd have a hard time at least convincing me that this wasn't Ohio State's very best team. So I, I think they're going to win the Big Ten, maybe going away. Um, real quick about the schedule, I know that they have Miami early on, and they do travel to Wisconsin and Iowa City. That's going to be kind of tough on them. But if they have a team that can win uh, those games, I think I think this is it. Um, I don't I'm not sold on Ja'Cory Harris being consistent. And I think Jim Trussell is going to try to play the USC card. Uh, last year, Ohio State beat or got beat by USC at home, and that kind of didn't ruin the season. But I think it will. I think it's going to emphasize the idea that they need to win uh, their early games. Um, <clears throat> I think last year, even if they would have beaten Purdue, Ohio State would have wound up 11 and one instead of 12 and 0. And I don't think they can. They can count on. Uh, everyone having one loss. I think especially this year with Boise State and TCU, uh, Boise and TCU are both starting out high enough, and they've been knocking on the door a little bit, and I think there might be enough groundswell to put them into a championship game if everyone else has a loss. And if Ohio State loses a game and, say, Alabama is 12-1 and or Florida is 12-1, uh, I think it's going to be really hard, even Oklahoma or Texas, uh, given the reputation of the Big Ten recently, to put them in. So I think that's going to be tough. So I think Trestle will get that message across, and they'll beat Miami and Columbus. Um, Iowa and Wisconsin, those are going to be two tough road games. Uh, I think they can beat Iowa. Uh, Iowa doesn't seem to play as well at home, and they've been kind of playing down to competition last year. Um, I think the game at Camp Randall will be tough. Um, if they can get out of that alive, and I don't see anybody else beating uh, Ohio State. The Wisconsin game will be tough, though. But I, I think for now, I'm, I'm definitely taking Ohio State as the, the best team in the Big Ten. Speaking of Wisconsin, I'm going to say Wisconsin's going to wind up in second. And, you know, as a team, they're just really good. I think offensively, Tolls in their quarterback is is underrated, I think, in the Big Ten. We hear a lot about uh, Terrell Pryor, obviously. But we also hear about Ricky Stanzi at Iowa. We hear about Kirk Cousins at Northwestern. We're, we've been hearing a lot about Robert Marv lately at Purdue. And I think even even some big hardcore Big Ten fans are very aware of what Ben Chappell can do at Indiana. Um, I think even, even the Penn State uh, quarterback – situation where they don't know, or uh, the Michigan situation between Tate Forcier and, Den and Denard Robinson even gets a little bit more look than what Tolson gets at Wisconsin. I think he's massively overlooked. Um, I think he's a quality quarterback in the Big Ten, um, and I think he's going to do. I think he's going to have a, a big, big year. Uh, John Clay comes back at running back, awesome offensive line. Um, they've got receivers they can throw to. I, offensively, Wisconsin should be really, really good. Um, defensively, I think J.J. Watt's going to be the best defensive end in the Big Ten. If not the best, he's going to be right behind Adrian Claiborne at Iowa. 
Um, I think he's. I think he's just going to be great. I think he'll be better than Jack Crawford at Penn State. I think he'll be better than uh, Ryan Kerrigan at Purdue. Um, so I, I really think Watt's going to be just amazing this year. Um, and they've got, you know, they've got some some players back at linebacker. They've got Jay Valet at safety. I think it's going to be really good uh, this year. He was really good last year. So I think defensively they're going to they're going to make some plays and, and play really well. Um, their non-conference schedule is not tough. They do have to play at Iowa. And that's their big road test. And Wisconsin's got a weird schedule because they play Ohio State at home, and then the week after they're at Iowa. The week after Iowa's a bye, so if they let it all hang out in those first two games, or in those not first two, but the first the the two game stretch where they get Ohio State and Iowa, if they can win those, uh, Wisconsin has an opportunity to run the table and make a serious case to be playing for the BCS championship. Uh, I think it's a year that's going to define Wisconsin. They've gotten close a lot, but this is a year where. It just seems like the team as a whole uh, really is coming together and will be able to win, and, and I think win big. I, I don't think they're going to beat Ohio State. I, I still think the Buckeyes just have, uh, you know, they're so good. They have everyone back from last year. and But but beyond that, I think they can beat Iowa, um, even in Iowa, and the rest of the Big Ten shouldn't pose too much of a problem if Wisconsin's on their game. So I definitely have them as the second best team in the Big Ten, and I think they'll finish second. Uh, finishing third is is Iowa. I'm sorry, Iowa's the third team of the top tier that 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 only has three teams. Um, <clears throat> the thing that Iowa that's kind of disturbing a little bit is they they somewhat play down the competition. Last last year you saw them you know get two field goal blocks at the end of the game to beat Northern Iowa at home. Uh, they played Arkansas State pretty close. They wound up losing to Northwestern when Ricky Stanzi went down. Although they were up, I think it was ten nothing, uh, and and somehow lost that game seventeen ten. Um, they they tend to play down the competition. They don't play fantastic at home, the way you like to see a really dominating team do when they have you in their backyard. Uh, that's the only thing that that concerns me about Iowa. Um, but outside of that, they they're going to be tremendous. I think offensively, Ricky Stanzi comes back at quarterback, um, and all he did was win last year. The the Hawkeyes were ten and zero in games that he started and finished. Um, <clears throat> I think Adam Robinson, Brandon Wager are back. They were freshmen last year and still did a great job running the ball. Johnson Koulianos is back as a wide receiver, who's a big-time playmaker. Um, they lost some uh, on their O-line, but Kirk Ferentz is an offensive line coach. I'm not really worried about that. Uh, one thing I am interested in seeing about Iowa is how they deal with the loss of tight end Tony Moyaki. Uh, when you watched Iowa games last year, he definitely seemed to be kind of a safety valve for Stanzi, so to speak, when they needed a big play over the middle or they needed a first down. It seems like Moyaki got the ball a lot along with Johnson Koulianos, and I, I think it'll be interesting to see who they get to replace Moyaki at tight end and if Stanzi can get into a rhythm with him. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, they're, they're fantastic. I mean, Adrian Claiborne, um, Carl Klug, uh, who are the other guys along? Christian Ballard and Broderick Benz on that defensive line. It, it's the best defensive line in the Big Ten, maybe the best defensive line in, in America. Um, just all four starters. Claiborne's a beast on the edge. I, I just think they're going to have a, uh, opposing teams are going to have a, just a horrible time trying to stop that defensive line. Um, they do take some losses at the linebacker. AJ Eads and Pat Anger are gone, but even on the even on the uh, the secondary, Tyler Sash comes back. Uh, Brett Greenwood comes back at safety. This is just going to be a very hard hitting attacking defense that Iowa has. It it, it allowed only 15 points a game last year. And I think they're going to do better this year. So they, they definitely have a situation where they're really going to take some opportunities uh, to win. I mean, if they played up to talent and capabilities, uh, took care of business at home, uh, there's no reason why Iowa should not be 12-0 uh, and 0 at the end of the year. It just works out well. They have to play uh, a road game at Arizona. But I think if they take care of business at home and beat the teams they should, uh, Iowa's got a perfect opportunity to go 12-0. They've, they've, they've always had problems in dealing with success, dealing with expectations while Kirk Ferentz has been the head coach. If they can, if they can somehow put that beside them and, uh, and, and really play hard, then there's no reason why the Hawkeyes should not be 12-0. They should be favored in almost every one of their games. If they get out to a hot start, you know, they should be favored at home against Wisconsin, probably favored against Ohio State. So you know, Vegas will come in thinking that this is a team that should be 12-0. Uh, watch for Iowa State. They play, they play Iowa State at home. And last year, they won. Iowa beat them 35 to three. Paul, that didn't sit well with Paul Rhodes, uh, Iowa State's head coach. And Rhodes was able to turn a pretty, pretty bad Iowa State program in his first year to a seven and six team um, that included a bowl win over Minnesota last year. So I think 
I think that he's definitely going to have the Cyclones up. It's an interstate rivalry, one of the best ones in my opinion. And I think they're going to have a good opportunity to maybe maybe shock some people. I think getting beat 35-3 to last year is definitely going to be be uh, be something that they're going to want to rectify. And I'm not, I don't know if they can beat Iowa, but you never know in these in these rivalry games. It just kind of depends. And, and Iowa sometimes has a problem with, with, with handling success. So the season could off, get off to a big start. They play Iowa State in the second uh, week of the season, September 11th. If they can win that game, I think it's a big deal for, for Iowa. I'm going to go ahead and just talk about uh, the second tier, and then I'll do one team from that. But the second tier, I think, is another three teams. I think Michigan State, Michigan, and Penn State are the the, the third are the second tier teams in the Big Ten. I think the team that's going to come in fourth is Michigan State. Um, that's probably more optimistic than what a lot of people are pegging them. Really like Kirk Cousins. Every time I saw Michigan State play last year, I came away more and more impressed with with Cousins play a quarterback. I think uh, they did. You know, they ran the ball well, but no one really took the reins. I think Larry Caper comes in and does a good job there this year. I think he's going to be he's going to be good. Um, they have, uh, who is it, Keith Nickel. I, I knew I was kept thinking he was a quarterback, but he's moving to receiver this year. Um, I think that gives him a big guy on the edge. B.J. Cunningham's going to be good. I'm really excited to see what Charlie Gant's going to do at tight end um, this year. I think he's going. I think he could have a big year, big target, uh, athletic. I think he's going to be really solid for for Michigan State this year. Um, Defensively, they should be okay. They got a real, real boost when um, senior Greg Jones, who was a first-team All-American last year, decided to, to to skip the NFL draft and come back. Uh, Eric Gordon was their second leading tatter, second leading tackler at, at linebacker. Um, you know, those are the two big names on defense. Uh, Jarrell Worthy comes back too. I think will be good on the D line. Uh, their secondary should be okay. Uh, they're not Michigan State. You know, I think part of it is you really got to like what Mark D'Antonio is doing with that squad, the way that they are. Um, more, they're more tough. They're getting better. Um, I, I think, I think that D'Antonio is the kind of coach, kind of like Pat Fitzgerald, where they're going to win close games. It just seems like he's going to come out on top of close games more than he might, uh, more than you might ordinarily expect. And I think that's going to be this year. Uh, I don't think they play a tough non-conference schedule. They get Notre Dame at home. Um, they also get uh, Wisconsin at home. If they can start the year five and zero. Oh, which, which is a big if, but if they can figure out how to win their home games, uh, this could be a team that could surprise a lot of people. I think, I think they're, they're dark horses for the Big Ten Championship, d definitively. And if they, if they can make that work somehow, I think that getting to that 5-0 and and beating Wisconsin at home, they could really roll because they get at Michigan, then Illinois comes, and then they're at Northwestern. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see this team be able to rip off 8-0 and now, their last four games of the schedule are rough. They play at Iowa. They're at, at Penn State. But Ohio State, are, they miss Ohio State in the schedule. And by missing that, you know, it, it opens a door. I don't know if they can beat Iowa at Iowa. But if they take care of business at home, maybe taking advantage of a Michigan team that might be reeling after you know, the first two or three games, they could easily maybe be a 10-2, and two, even an 11-1 type squad. I mean, that's the best-case scenario. But I think that could definitely be – something Michigan State could hope for. And I, I just see an 8, 9, 10-win season definitely in the realm of possibility. And it just seems like Michigan State might be ready to take that next spot or that next uh, next step as a program under D'Antonio. A great coach, uh, like I say, love Cousins. Uh, Greg Jones coming back. I think it could be a good year. So um, only the first four teams recap. I got Ohio State is one, uh, Wisconsin two, Iowa three, Michigan State four. And I'll post another one video up soon that talks about uh, – five, six, seven, and eight before we get to the bottom half of the conference.